Hi, brothers and sisters, uh, boys and girls, and uh, everyone who's in here. Um, my name is Sergey. I have a beautiful family. I have with three little kids. Uh, they are unable to be with me, but I would like to share something that impacted my life uh, through, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, which has impacted my life through my youth uh, since I started the college, and then at the some point, uh, God showed me the path that it's been walked by many youth people, and uh, let's get to it. Uh, let's read uh, all together Matthew 7. It's going to be Matthew 7, uh, chapter 15. I'm sorry, yeah, chapter 7, verse, from verse 15. It says, uh, beware, be, beware of false prophets who come to you in sheep's clothes, clothing, but inwardly are ravenous wolves. You will recognize them by their fruits. Are grapes gathered from thorn bushes or figs from thistles? So every healthy tree bears good fruit, but the diseased tree bears bad fruit. A healthy tree cannot bear bad fruit, nor can a diseased tree bear good fruit. Every tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. Thus you will recognize them by their fruit. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, which you already heard this uh, afternoon, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but the one who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. On that day, many will say to me, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name? And cast out demons in your name. And do many mighty works in your name. I'm sorry, guys. And then will I declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you workers of lawlessness. I'm sorry. We can see the God's principles in this few, war, a few verses. We see the Lord ask, are the grapes gathered from thorn bushes or figs from uh, thistles? So we can see the bad things cannot produce good things. Let's read uh, James 3, chapter 3. <laughs> 11 through uh, 12. Does the spring pour forth are from the same open both fresh and salt water. Can a fig tree, my brothers, bear olives or a grapevine produce figs? Neither can a salt bond yield fresh water. We see in both texts uh, God, Jesus Christ, and James comes to this principal conclusion. So the source of bitter water cannot produce sweet water. So we know the source of evil never cannot produce the good things, cannot produce the godly things. I also want you guys to go back to first uh, Genesis. It's gonna be Genesis uh, chapter fourth. We'll read several verses. Now Adam knew Eve his wife, and she conceived and bore Cain. Says, I have gotten a man with the help of the Lord. And again, she bore his brother Abel. Now Abel was a keeper of sheep, and a Cain, I'm sorry, and a Cain, a worker of ground. In the course of time, Cain brought to the Lord an offering of the fruit of the ground. And Abel also brought of the firstborn of his flock and of their fat portions. And the Lord had regard for Abel and his offering. But for Cain and his offering, he had no regard. So Cain was very angry and his face fell. The Lord said to Cain, why are you angry? And why has your face fallen? 
if you do well, will you not be accepted? And if you do not do well, sin is crouching at the door. Its desire is for you, but you must rule over it. Cain spoke to Abel, his brother, and when they were in the field, Cain rose up against his brother Abel and killed him. Then the Lord said to Cain, Where is Abel, your brother? He said, I don't know. Am I my brother's keeper? And the Lord said, What have you done? The voice of your brother's blood is crying to me from the ground. As we can see, there's uh, two parallels between Matthew and Genesis. There is, uh, we have uh, two scenarios, two brothers who are serving the Lord, who are bringing the sacrifices, and we see one sacrifice was accepted to Lord, and another one was denied. We we'll also see Jesus says, those who were claimed, O Lord, O Lord, have we not prophesied by your name? Have we not used your name to cast demons? He said, I never knew you. Go away. So this is a, such a big parallel between the two, two stories that the God denials of their services. My question to you, we serve, we worship God. As a result, was the service or worship accepted by God? Is this something that we do? Is this something that we love to do? That we something we promote in our life and in service to God? Has it been accepted? We see two brothers. We see Abel and Cain. We see, I, there's Bible does not tell us like um, why Cain brought from fruits. But my assumptions, if I can say that, that I think he knew God would never refuse something that he would not ask them what, how to do. And we see it was accepted by Abel, I'm sorry, accepted by God, Abel's uh, sacrifice, but it was uh, refused by Cain. And eventually we see the led to death. I would like to share my story a little bit, how God has served in my life and how God brought my heart to him. Uh, in age 22, I was able to leave my parents' house, not because I didn't want to live with them, but I was accepted in the University of Bellarmine, University of Louisville, Kentucky. And at that time, I studied medicine. I was um, learning a nursing program. And uh, by that time, I was able to meet one of the director of music. And uh, we had such a good conversation, and he asked me if I can sing in his choir, but I said, but I'm mostly perform trumpet. He said, oh, no problem. We have a symphony, uh, symphony, uh, wind symphony orchestra. Why don't you join? I said, oh, yeah, sure. But in order to that, I have to be, um, uh, have a degree or work toward the musical degree. So I had some time. I said, yeah, sure, I'll do it. And by that, I was involved in, in music since then. I was a trumpet performance solo. And uh, during that uh, time, I was able to perform in the pep band, uh, traveling with my basketball team. Uh, also be, was part, of, as I said, the Gwyn Symphony Orchestra and the small jazz band rock uh, music. And uh, uh, being involved in that, uh, traveling around some uh, states with my uh, team, uh, basketball team, uh, feeling and knowing what the world has produced and provide in our lives, and it started traveling when I moved back to California, Sacramento. God helped me to see the things, but I still was convicted there is a, uh, we can worship God as we want or involve the music as it is, as it flows. And, uh, but I started keep asking the question, Lord, what's going on, Lord? Can you show me? Is there is this something wrong leading to us? We all know there's a CCM uh, movement. It's called Contemporary Christian uh, musical movement. And uh, so one time I opened Ephesian, I would like to share with you. And it says, in which you once walk following the course of, of this world, 
following the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that is now at work in the sons of disobedience. So that uh, caught my heart, caught, uh, caught my attention of that, that there is something that a world does. As you can see over here, it says, which you once walked following the course of this world. So there's a two different ways. There is a worldly view, the worldly course, and there is a God's course. And we have to distinguish. Music is such a big influence right now in our youth, uh, even in um, adulthood around um, Christianity. And um, my question to you, my question was, I raised, is there any kind of music, music style, can be served our Lord? Does any kind of music style accepted by God? Music style. Is it neutral? Is it true or false? How can we distinguish what, what style, what music? Is music wrong to use to glorify God? And uh, by that time, I started researching and studying more about it. Is there the truth in music? Is it true that I can serve God with music and also uh, be in denial? And um, interesting book uh, I was reading, actually, I ran into uh, called um, uh, the author is called Frank Garlock. I would like to share a couple um, couple things of, of that. So what he's saying in his book that um, it was done studies by uh, uh, by secular people not who are not close to the Christian. So in his book, the music written to you, it's uh, by Fishman and Shelley Catch, two, pra two practicing certified music therapists and instructors of New York University States. What they're saying. If we're saying the music is neutral, if the music does, does, doesn't care as long as the right words in there, so this is what the world says. Music is a communication, and communication is music. So music is a form of nonverbal communication. Therefore, thoughts, emotions, a meaning all make the impact on the listener without a single word. Since music, the emotional language, and since some emotions are wrong for the child of God, the some music and some sounds are wrong for the uh, for Christians. So I began to uh, learn more about it. How does can influence? Uh, and it troubled me when we start seeing more and more. Uh, happening in our churches uh, using more contemporary uh, Christian music. And uh, I also did a little study of uh, like Slavic community. We are about 20 years behind of American culture. So we are catching up. And this is like, this is a, uh, how to say it, uh, scares me or bothers me. In 1950s, that's when the rock music started moving uh, in some early 1940s. But then you can see the prog uh, progression of it. In 1970s, 1980s, 1990s, we got the pop music was well popular and bars, but now it's very popular in, our, in most of Christian churches. And uh, so why do we have to raise the question? Why do we have to ask? Why do we have to learn, I mean, learn or search for the answer? So I'll give you only a few examples so you can start thinking, so you can start pro um, processing thoughts in your head. How can I serve the God so my service will not be denied? So it would be accepted by God. I would like to start with, uh, uh, guys, we all know rock and roll. It's pretty harsh, right, to hear I'm uh, once Christians. But it's, it is hard, but as you can test each of, one of us, how many of us has been mm, captured by that music? I did. I had. And I'm not proud of it. So there's a several characteristics of rock and roll. Rock and roll is driven by beat and repetition. And also the study by then repetition, what do we know it is? It's hypnotizing, knowing that the key is repetition. So what it does, it just repeat. Repeats the same, same motion, same words, same phrases, 
which has that effect. Uh, also, also good to know, it's also by secular, uh, secular people, The Art of Rock and Roll by Charles T. Brown. It says right here, perhaps the most important defined quality of rock and roll is beat. Rock and roll is different from other music, primarily because of the beat. The music within you uh, by music therapist, the sexuality of music is usually refers to in terms of its rhythm. Rhythm, It is the beat that commands a directly physical response. Brothers and sisters, some girls and boys, I want to tell you one thing. Rhythm is good. Rhythm is necessary in music. As we all know, the heart has its own rhythm. But the problem with this is the heart becomes accelerate and or decelerate it cause defect on the person body and then it times for the medicine it times for the shock it times for impossible it can cause the death so rhythm is good but it has to be right rhythm in the music and what it it's also means like sensuality so it's engagement expression or pursuing of physical especially sexual pleasure that's what it's actually meaning rock and roll so also, I would like you to introduce another author, another um, uh, God-loving person, but Dan Lucarini. Just tell you about him. He is the, also, in the past, he was a former performer of rock music. He was, uh, he's a composer. He also was a leader at worship uh, uh, Christian churches. And he was leading the worship with the CCM uh, title, Contemporary Christian Music. This is what he says, embraces many different contemporary music styles with a heavy syncopated beat such as soft rock, smooth jazz, rap, and pop rock, but the father of them was, is rock and roll, which is originated from the slang phrase as we know is for having sex. I just want to ask you one question. The definition of that type of music, the definition of the style I said, is this acceptable to have in our Christian life? You probably all agree not. Is this acceptable to worship God with type of music? It's obvious not. But we see how progressive time is affect not just us, it's affect our generation which were behind 20 years catching up on that. I just want you guys to uh, have that alarm in your heart and said, Lord, what is acceptable to you? Time Magazine puts it. This is world, guys. This is, this is not us. This is what they say, rock and roll, has by its very beat and sound always celebrate sexuality. Look, the whole, wor uh, the whole rock world seems recognize that the rock music style appeals to, to strongly to the flesh. What we actually hearing most of our time here, how we can be more guided and living by God's will but not driven by flesh. Roman 12.1, I beseech you therefore, brothers, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies as a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service, worship. So having this talked about, there's more to talk. We are very limited on the time. But I just want to raise a couple of those questions so you guys start just thinking what God wants from me, what God wants from us. Um, so the principles of godly music style, what, what the Bible says. I would like to share a couple of verses. First uh, John uh, second uh, chapter 15 verse do not love the world or the things in the world if anyone loves the world 
the love of the Father is not in him. Another part I would like to share, it's a 2 Timothy chapter 2, 22. So flee youthful passions, or it's some version says lust, and pursue righteousness, faith, love, and etc. This is the principles of God, how he wants us to look at the music. Again, does God accept or deny our service to Lord? Does God accept our lifestyle? That's what's driven us. And uh, I would encourage you to have time to find and read, especially the guys who are in the music and love God. And uh, the book by Dan Lucarini, uh, he said, Why I Left Contemporary Music Movement. It's a very strong book. And also um, Frank Garlock, the author, and he also the um, originated seminary. There's another, to conclude and finish that, Ephesians uh, chapter 510, proving what is acceptable unto the Lord and have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them. Another one, Colossians 3, 1 through 2. If then you have been raised with Christ, seek the thing that are above. Where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God, set your minds on things that are above, not on things that are on yours. Let us let God help us to seek what is acceptable to him in our life, in our music, in our lifestyle, in our families. Amen.